PDS TV, the best in edutainment. Our ultimate goal by giving students like yourselves a task like the science fair where we're getting you to think is to make sure that you understand and grasp this idea that the people who are coming to the rescue, so to speak, of humanity, it's us. We are trying to train our future. That's you. I'm the old. You are the new. Old and withered. Young and fresh. And so we want to make sure that you are ready to take up that challenge when the time comes. By learning and practicing these skills, how do you talk to a person who's just asking you a bunch of questions? You're practicing something that you're going to need later in life at your first job interview. The ability to explain something complicated clearly and without going on for too long is something that turns out to be really valuable. on the effect of ethanol HDL on the feminization of male fish. My project was used to test ethanol HDL, which is the main component in birth control and its effect on the pH of male guppies to be exact. The feminization really is just the increased estrogen levels in an aquatic habitat, which is what happens to fish. Um, it causes them to have either increased birth defects, it causes them to produce female tissue or female eggs, and pretty much all I did was take the pH, and pH is potential hydrogen, and it was a better way of comparing their data to females, which was the control in my experiment. So all I did was take the pH for three trials of three days to watch as it increased over time, and if the male fish had a similar, if not the exact same pH as the female fish, and that means the ethnic estrogen increased estrogen levels calls for them to have feminization. So can you tell us a little bit more about your hypothesis and which ones? Um, well, I did some research, and so my hypothesis was um, if there was more lactase in the smoothie, so basically any dairy-based ingredients, and my results actually um, supported my hypothesis. So then the lactase ingredients would go quicker into the system? But the, the dairy ingredients may not necessarily have more sugar, but they just enter quicker. Whereas the fruits tend to have more sugar, but they enter slower. You've got the lactase to do that. Yes. Down here, this is um, the concentration of each ingredient before they react to any enzyme. And then this is after they react with the inbred taste to see if they increase at all or, deep or uh, stay the same. And so if they increase, that's why I knew they reacted with that enzyme and that's when they were digested in the body. But if they stayed the same, then I knew they didn't react with the enzyme. And then the same for lactose. And so that's how I determined that all the dairy ingredients reacted with lactase, whereas the, sh the, um, the fruits reacted better with the taste. And then these are my smoothies, and I basically did the same thing as the ingredients to determine which smoothies were digested by lactase or taste. For your concentration percentages, it's the concentration of what? Um, how much sucrose is within the sucrose? Yeah, okay. is within the um, ingredient. Okay. I'm sorry, glucose, glucose. That's what I'm sorry. Hi, my name is Anshi. I am from Dunwoody High School. Hi, I'm Hannah. I'm from Dunwoody High School. So this is our science fair project. It's about painkiller dissolution rates. And basically, we were testing how different types of painkillers would dissolve in their times in the gastric acid. So we wanted to find out which painkiller would be the best for the fastest to relieve your pain. So we made the acid and we put the pill in it to um, see how fast it would dissolve, and whichever one dissolved the fastest, we concluded would work the fastest. Basically, we made uh, shoes that when you walk, they harness the vibrations of you walking and they charge a battery with it. So you can charge any device like a phone or something at a later date. Primarily, for we kind of had to put it back on with uh, tape because it kept on falling off. But it wasn't with tape originally. <laughs>
You mean I can use my shoes when I take my walk to charge my cell phone? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's basically, it's basically what we do. And after crunching a little bit of the math, we figured out that with these statistics, you could, in theory, charge uh, iPhone 6s, which is the most common phone, to 5% with just an hour of walking, which is kind of a lot of walking. But at the same time, in an emergency situation, you know, I feel like it's just enough to make a phone call or something. Yeah, if you need a call. And I feel like that would be the most, uh, that's the biggest application, I think. Is if in other words, if you're walking the Appalachian Trail, and you fall and break the leg, you charge up enough to, to call my Exactly, yes. Yeah, so she got service. <laughs> yeah. So basically, that's where I think the biggest application is, right? Now. That's just the other issue. Common uh, sugar substitute, and we compared it to sugar on the effects of the blood glucose, specifically in adolescents. Because uh, diabetes has become a more prevalent issue, especially in uh, adolescents, of course. And uh, in the future, we hope to decrease chances of diabetes. And um, people who have diabetes, they have to be very careful about how much sugar they intake and the glucose in their insulin levels. We tested 15 participants. We had them sign consent forms, and we gave them. We tested them twice in a week-long period. The first time, we gave them lemonade with regular sugar and we put them with our blood glucose monitor to take their um, stable blood glucose levels the first time and then we gave them the drink and an hour afterwards we tested them again to see how it, their blood glucose either changed higher or better and then we did it two hours after to see two hours after change. And then we did, repeated this process again with the next week with lemonade with aspartame and okay. So we uh, handed out consent forms to a lot of different people, and then we just ensured that uh, they came from a variety of backgrounds. We have uh, different uh, genders and uh, races. Okay. Did you try to balance those out at all, like yes. like men versus women, for instance? We had five people of each race, okay. and our males versus females were fair. Average. My name is Zachary. I go to Burnbank Science Center and my project is about how safe today's today's bumpers are. It analyzes uh, two bump two types of bumpers, old bumpers, uh, which are solid structure bumpers, and today's more malleable flexible bumpers. Uh, in doing so, I measured the acceleration and kinetic energy conserved within the bumpers and I applied it to electric cars and how um, Electric cars are safer motor transport for every day. Hi, I'm Marina. This is Molly, and this is Lauren, and we are from Doney High School, 10th grade. Our project is prevention on a budget. So basically, we decided to test uh, materials best. Uh, for flood prevention based on uh, price, uh, water absorption, and abundance. Uh, we chose this topic because of the devastation from the hurricanes in 2017, such as Hurricane Harvey and Hurricane Maria, that left many areas in devastation from the flooding of the aftermath. Hi, my name is Sabina. I'm an AP Physics C student at Fernbank Science Center, and this is my project entitled Viscous Vortex. So what I did was I put solutions of varying viscosity in a rotating cylinder, and then I created position time graphs of the water level using um, the online analysis system tracker. Um, and I found some really cool results um, where as viscosity increased, the peak, the average peak height of the um, water decreased. And um, building off of Newton's bucket argument, I was able to um, create um, equations of the parabolas for the parabolic surface curves of each solution, and found and was also able to prove using integral calculus that the vertex dipped below the bottom of the container. 
So some pretty cool results that can be applied to maybe centrifugal pumps, which are used to transport fluids um, to, for industrial purposes, agricultural purposes, municipal purposes. So this could potentially be applied for different liquids of varying viscosity to transport them to various places.